Speaking allows us to form connections with others. It allows us to change minds and change hearts, sometimes if we're lucky. Without the ability to communicate our message and to share our ideas and our thoughts, impacting change and making progress in the working world, in business, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, as almost anything, truthfully, becomes that much more difficult, much more difficult than it needs to be. I'm Lisa Lacroix. This is the Artful Aging channel. I'm 100% committed to helping you build the skills you need so that when you're ready to find your story and to share it with the world on whatever platform is right for you, you can do so effectively. So here are just a few of my top speaking skills tips. Don't worry about being nervous. If you're nervous, you are like 98 or 99% of the population. Almost everyone, when on a stage or in the spotlight, feels nervous, even people who have a lot of experience. Now, of course, practice and experience are gonna reduce the impact of nerves, but everyone feels nervous, especially if it's something that you care about, especially if there's a reason you want to do well, you're gonna feel nervous. It's human nature. Don't try to not be nervous. Don't worry about it. Your nerves are your energy, it's your life force. It's the vibrancy and it gives authenticity to who you are as a human being. The next tip is to be real, be yourself. There's no one like you. And as much as it's human nature to want to present in a certain way or to model someone who you think does a good job, the real power is in the truth of who you are. Now your skills, might come from being funny, from being knowledgeable, or a true expert in your field. Whatever it is that's your natural skill set, your personality, know it and celebrate it, expand on it and use it, and don't try to change yourself because more and more in our current times, what audiences connect to most deeply is a sense of relatability the feeling that the person is being true and honest with them. It wasn't always the case, but especially in the last couple of years, and I'm gonna say post pandemic, and maybe as a growth of social media and younger generations who don't want to have a slickness sold to them anymore, authenticity and realness have become the currency of communication. You can be truly who you are. The third tip is to make contact create connections, create relationships, even in the simplest of ways. So if you're speaking in a real life room in three dimensions, walk up to people who show up early who, or who are there at the beginning of your presentation and introduce yourself. Find out their name, ask where they're from. You can even simply make small talk with them, but create some warmth and connection with them because then you know you'll have at least one friendly face in the audience. Doing so can also give you some insight into the community you'll be speaking into. You might find some quirky thing out about the group, or about the project that the company is working on. The same skill set works just fine on Zoom. So when someone comes into the Zoom room, chat with them, ask their name, create connections so that you know that you have at least one friendly face that you can look to when you're presenting. You can feel free with some discernment to take detours into brief stories. I tell you this one with a little bit of a caveat, and that is that not everyone is capable of going off on a tangent and not losing themselves completely. But once you know your topic area, you can begin little by little to trust yourself to go off in other directions and to tell short stories. Refining the way that you speak so that you say and get to the essence of the point without a lot of filler, without a lot of circling. While I want you to feel free to go off on a little bit of a tangent to tell a story or to share something that might be relevant to your message, be discerning with your choices on that and make sure you rein yourself in. And if you're going to go off on a tangent that you stay fairly clear and concise in your language. 
which leads us to the next tip, avoid filler words in weak language. Most people have no idea how often they use filler words because we become unconscious of it. So you can do yourself the biggest favor by either recording yourself, speaking extemporaneously, and looking for words or phrases that are not adding meaning or value to the message you're sharing, or have a friend count how many times you say like, for example. Weak language diminishes your authority. And while there are times to speak casually and to not feel an expectation, for yourself to speak in formal and controlled ways, the awareness is so important. Because when you use a lot of empty words, when you use a lot of filler words, when you use 10 times more words than you need to to express your point, you'll lose people. So there's a fine line between being relatable and losing people because you're not being direct and to the point. My final tip is my favorite. I believe it's the queen of speaking skills tips, and that is pause. Pause and knowing how to use it well is powerful because it's a win-win. It serves the last tip of reducing the amount of weak language that you're using. So when you use pause effectively, you not only reduce the weak language because you're giving yourself the time to think of what's next instead of filling it with weak language because you're afraid that you can't really stop, but you also give yourself the win, win, win of a moment and a breath to connect with yourself and to connect with the idea, the thoughts that you want to share so that you can decide which one needs to come next without tripping over your words. And it gives you the ability to connect with your audience. Pausing gives your audience a chance to process and to integrate the information you've shared with them. This is especially so if you have challenging information to share, scientific information, if there's a lot of buzzwords in your content, or if the ideas are complex. When you're sharing complicated ideas, you wanna speak in chunks, with a lot of pauses. So your audience has the ability to synthesize and to integrate the information. So pause is the queen because it gives so many added benefits. It can create intrigue, it can create curiosity. It gives you a sense of authority and confidence. One thing you'll notice is the people who use pause well are the people who communicate a kind of high status and a comfort with themselves and a certainty about what they're saying. People who are not good at pausing come across as nervous and stressed and insecure and uncertain. Another tip you can use to reduce the self-consciousness is to take the attention off yourself. So many of us pay an incredible amount of attention to the fear that we might forget our lines or our script or worry about how we're gonna be perceived, or concern about are we gonna do a good job, or all the noisy gremlin voices in our head that are telling us negative things about ourselves. If we can take the attention off ourselves and put it on our message and the importance and why of our being here, pay attention to our purpose for sharing the information and our commitment to serving our audience our desire to have our audience feel comfortable and receptive and aware of what we're saying and an understanding of our message so that it's landing, if we can check in with them and see how they're doing. It takes so much of the energy and self-consciousness away from us that when we make our audience the star, we free ourselves of our own self-consciousness. And my final tip is to simply be brave and be compassionate to yourself as a human being. So many of the skills we work on, the things that we want to improve, require taking the steps to practice and do it over and over again and sometimes fail and hopefully learn from our failures. We're human beings and we're gonna make mistakes and the more we can have compassion for ourselves and for our limitations, 
the, the better. And the more we can simply be brave in the midst of our compassion for ourselves, the better. The more opportunities we'll have to practice, the more opportunities we'll have to improve. The more opportunities we'll have to make a difference with our stories and with our voices. I'm Lisa Lacroix. This is the Artful Aging channel. I share speaking skills tips, and these have been a few of the tips that I share in my Speak For Yourself course. Please follow, and there's another video here that will share some more speaking skills tips that I think will be useful for you. See you next time.